Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Another day on FIFA 22 Ultimate Team and another market crash. I want to talk about this market is crashing once again inside of FIFA 22 because of the content that we had yesterday and just what is going on in this game right now. I want to take a look backwards and look at some prices that dropped yesterday, why stuff dropped with the pack supply that we had from UEFA marquee matchups, from the Anaki Williams SBC, and from packs in the store all of that supply together, and as well, just people taking coins off of the game with this 75 plus player pick SBC. It's really rinsing some coins off this game because people are buying gold cards to go and do that upgrade pack SBC. And that means coins are being lost while people open those packs and while that SBC is out. So I want to look backwards and talk about that. But I also want to look forwards and I want to look forwards and talk about how we can learn from these market crashes so that we can be prepared the next time this happens, the next time we see a UEFA marquee matchups or a pack supply SBC or, you know, the new weekly fluctuation where a lot of stuff is its highest on Mondays and a lot of stuff reaches its lowest on Fridays. That's the normal weekly fluctuation. And just talk about how those market movements can play on a weekly basis, how you can avoid losing a lot of coins on crashes like this that we seem to have every single week, right? Every single week we seem to have big drop-offs in this game. So if you're enjoying the videos on the channel, make sure to hit a thumbs up on this one. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it, right? I'm going to the SBC section because that's where the panic was caused and that's where this market dropped today. That's why this market dropped. It's this SBC right here, the UEFA marquee matchups SB. See, now usually on Thursdays we see the market drop because of regular marquee matchups. And now we have UEFA marquee matchups on Champions League's weeks. Um, we'll see this rele released basically every single week. There are Champions League, uh, Europa League, and Conference League games inside of the midweek. We should expect one of these marquee matchups SBCs. People were expecting this yesterday, right? And that was part of the market drop heading into 6 p.m. content. But with this tradable pack supply SBC that basically everybody is doing because that's really cheap. It's really easy to do these marquee matchups SBCs because of this pack supply in here. Three solid packs that you get for a very cheap SBC. Even this Anaki Williams SBC gave out some tradable pack supply. All the packs in here are tradable. If you ended up doing this SBC, which actually, believe it or not, even though this has a two-star weak foot on this card and the card doesn't look that insane except for the pace, this guy's being completed a lot. And I'll talk about that why in a little bit. So the supply from this SBC, the pack supply came from Anaki Williams and the store supply, 35K packs on a Tuesday. That's a lot of supply for a Tuesday. That is what caused the market to drop off the most yesterday. Now also aiding in that supply, was the 75 plus player pick SBC taking coins off the market since Monday. We saw the market start to drop off at Monday's content time, not with supply, but just because people are going out and buying gold cards. They're selling players from their team to go do this player pick because people are getting insane stuff out of it and they want to try to pack team of the week cards, road to the knockout stage cards and high rated golds in this game from this player pick SBC. So again, number one, I guess you could say suspect of why the market dropped off today is the supply right and i want to take a look at some of these drop-offs and talk about these prices and how these cards moved on the market and how you can honestly trade on days when we have pack supply like this take a look at kdb 140,000 coins heading into yesterday on tuesday dropped at content down to 115 he was actually about 105k on snipe on playstation before now, he has rebounded back up to 125,000 coins. Now, not all cards rebounded up whatsoever. A lot of cards even have continued to go lower in price as we take a, took a, take a look across this market. And we'll talk about the differences on some of those things. A lot of you guys are wondering what in the world has happened to Rashford and to Pogba and to Bruno Fernandes and to a lot of like Premier League cards, right? Rashford was 94K on Monday, dropped off a little bit because of the, the 75 plus pack, right? But look what happened yesterday, 85K all the way down to 67. And right now he's at 70,000 coins. Same thing with Bruno. Bruno is like 80K. He's now down in the 60s. Pogba is like under, he's an 89,000 coin card. A lot of these Premier League cards are down because all of the hype is on the Serie A 
and La Liga. And the hype is on La Liga because of the Fakir SBC, the Isak card, the Benzema SBC, this Anaki Williams. Like, they do this a lot of times in FIFA. We've The last two big player SBCs we've gotten have been La Liga. And we've gotten some really insane Serie A cards recently inside of the Road to the Knockouts promo is they kind of push these leagues, right? They kind of push up, they release a couple SBCs or a couple really hype players from a couple leagues and they'll push the Serie A and they'll push La Liga. Now, pretty soon, that's going to die off, right? And there's going to be a lot of hype for Premier League. There's going to be a lot of hype for League One or Bundesliga. But that is why you saw some of these cards like La Liga's bounce back. Now, where's De Young? He is uh, suspect number one on a bounce back along with Laporte, or not Laporte, sorry, Urente. But take a look at this De Young card, right? 120,000 coins. Tuesday morning, dropped all the way down with the panic and with a supply to 105,000 coins. With the UEFA marquee matchup supply around the content drop, rebounded back to about 115, 114 where he is now. So, you know, a solid 12 to 15,000 coin swing. If you got some snipes, this guy was snipeable at 100K yesterday on the market. Now, take a look at your rente because of this Inaki Williams SBC. Even though a ton of people are saying no to Naki Williams, a lot of people are doing his SBC at the same time. This Urente card went from 150K in the morning yesterday all the way up to 165, and he's going higher right now. He's 170,000 coins because he gets that green at uh, link, and he's one of the most popular midfielders in the La Liga, and he's linking to this Naki Williams SBC. Now, let's talk about this SBC for a hot minute. For 4,800, 4,800 downvotes on this SBC on Footbin and 1,600 upvotes. Now, why does this even have 1,600 upvotes? It's the pace. 123K, it's a bit pricey, right? It's a bit expensive for this SBC, especially considering the glaring, glaring part of this card is the is the two-star weak foot. Obviously, everybody loves the 96 pace. Everybody hates the two-star weak foot. People are going to do this SBC, though, because of this one reason right here. It's the 75 plus player pick, man. We talked about it in yesterday's video. This is supplying so much fodder to the market. People have 82s, 83s, 84s. And if you take a look at why this SBC has so many upvotes, and a, a lot of people are doing this because it plays, this is a very, very smart decision by EA Sports. Overprice an SBC for a striker on a brand new card design that looks absolutely incredible in this game with this dynamic image, 96 pace on a very popular FIFA card, if you will. This is a very popular FIFA card um, and overpriced that SBC a little bit because people have extra fodder because they've been doing this uh, 75 plus player pick SBC. So that is why you see that Urente, and that is why you see this Anaki Williams, you know, the pack supply from this Anaki Williams impacting the market as well because they're all tradable packs and there's some decent packs inside of there along with the marquee matchup supply and the store supply. So that's a little bit about the Anaki Williams and very smart move from EA Sports, but that happens all the time when we have a good player pick SBC that is out. EA knows that people have fodder and they have cards, extra cards in their club after doing an SBC like this. And that's why they released a little bit of an overpriced SBC. But again, back to the market and some of these price drop-offs. I don't think that this stuff rebounds. I really do not think that this stuff rebounds, at least today onto Wednesday. Think about what Wednesdays have been over the past couple weeks. Let's look at the index 100, right? What Wednesdays have been, you can see a huge drop-off. This is just the market crash in general, going from 69 points, 70 points, down to into the mid to low 60s, 65 points. You look at where we have the peaks every single week, Tuesday, Tuesday, this last week, actually Monday was the peak. Now we're dropping off because of the 75 plus player pick and because of the content we had yesterday on Tuesday. But when you look at some of the low times on the week, you see the weekends are kind of low times, right? Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday. Now this last weekend, Friday. So again, we're heading into a lower time of the week on our normal weekly fluctuation and our normal weekly market movements. We're probably going to have a lot of people opening promo packs for Road to the Knockout, supposedly coming Team 2 this Friday. That's going to be more promo packs being opened up, more supply coming to this market with promo packs in the store and people opening packs with FIFA points and stuff like that. And that's probably going to make it the market drop even more heading into this weekend. Now think about Wednesdays, right? With Tuesdays being the inflection point, we, we looked at these graphs the past two weeks. Every single Wednesday at 6 p.m., people start selling because they're worried about division rivals rewards that come out on Thursday mornings. 
That's probably going to happen a little bit today. I really don't expect the market to kick back up that much until we get into the weekend more because, again, we're getting into that time of the week where a lot of people are just waiting for the weekend to come. They're waiting for those promo packs and that supply because the pack weight is, again, so insane on this game. They know that the Fridays, with all those packs being open for the new promo, whatever it is, is kind of the low point. So for most cards on this market, right, this may not, you know, this may not pertain to your guys like Conte or Mbappe or Messi or Ronaldo, Neymar that are just so high in price that are just like the elite tier that so many people are just trying to get right now. But for a lot of your guys, like maybe even Kempembe, you know, these cards might fluctuate a couple thousand coins over the next couple days. But especially if you're looking to buy one of these for your team, I'd be waiting still. I would be waiting still if you sold one of these earlier in the week when we talked about selling on Monday. You're, you're happy because you sold Kempembe at 70K. Now you're looking at him at 60,000 coins and you're licking your chops, right? You're maybe thinking Friday, I might be able to get him for like in the 50s, right? 55,000 coins. I think that's very possible as we get into this weekend, depending on what happens with content today, of course, and on Thursday. Um, but you're probably going to see prices dropping off a little bit more into this weekend. I'm not really expecting a big rise today as this market just feels dead. This market feels really dead. I've been trading with a few things today. Besides icons and a couple of these out of pack specials, I was able to time some fluctuations just right. I bought all these ESOCs uh, for right around 89. I think I got one at 89. I got one at 90, a 91 and a 92. And I sold them between 96 and 103K. So that was a good fluctuation trade there. Um, it's just, it's hard. I've had this uh, one example. Where's my guy at? Luis Hernandez, this 87 rated Luis Hernandez icon card. This has been the cheapest 87 Hernandez on the market for now about 35 minutes between two different listings. And the man is not sold. It's crazy. This market just seems dead. Nobody wants to buy. Everybody's doing player picks. And they're waiting for the for the market to drop even more as we head into this weekend. So that's why I really don't think this market's going to rebound until we get into that weekend time frame. Or I would not recommend buying cards for your team uh, unless you're trying to just do some quick flips on the market. It's seemingly kind of dead at the moment. So again, how can we spart, spart, spart? How can we spot, if I could speak some words properly, how can we spot these market crashes before they come, right? Now we know the weekly trend, right? It's, it's looking like the market is lowest on Thursday nights into Friday mornings for a lot of cards out of packs and then Fridays in packs cards get slammed with promo pack supply with whatever promos coming out. And that is kind of the lowest point. Friday has been the lowest point for most cards on this game. At some point on the weekend, usually Friday or Saturday, you hit a low point, then you rise up into Sunday. As people get their weekend league rewards, they get coins, they buy cards for their team, they upgrade, and they start there. Again, they play some rivals, maybe finish their foot champs games if they haven't. But specifically that Monday morning time frame when the weekend league rewards are given out to everybody, whereas a lot of people still don't quit out of all their weekend league games just because they're not used to that. A lot of that Monday morning, or you like early UK time, Monday morning, I think it's like 7 or 8 a.m. UK when foot champs rewards are released and given out. That's when you see the market pick up a little bit extra. And Mondays are kind of that high point, right? Depending on the content, it might rise a little bit more into Tuesday. We saw that last week. But you kind of know that on UCL weeks, you're probably going to have some of this pack supply on a Tuesday with the UEFA marquee matchups. You know that on Fridays, there's a lot of panic selling and there's a lot of supply from promo packs. And you know on Thursdays that we get these regular marquee matchups SBCs, which supply the market a decent amount. Uh, so you kind of just get the idea and you figure it out that, you know, usually the Wednesday, Thursday time frame is when you see the market drop off into the weekend. And then you kind of get to that peak on the Monday time, time frame. And if it's a UCL week, probably the next time we have UCL, which I think is like, again, not next week, but the week after, when we get these UEFA marquee matchups SBCs again, I'm going to be telling you guys on Sunday, like, hey, watch the market on Monday because we're going to have more pack supply. It's going to kind of be that sort of thing. Now, sometimes EA will spring a pack supply SBC on us at any time. Like we have these SBCs like the underdogs, right? Jumbo premium gold pack. That's not a very good value or a very good pack um, as a tradable pack in this game. Rare Electrum pack on tradable. If they made that tradable, that might move the market a little bit. If you see a random tradable pack supply SBC is what we call these, a tradable pack supply SBC, where it's just an SBC to get a pack. When you see these pop up, 
you can trade with those fluctuations that we saw today on this market, right? Like we saw this De Young, knowing what is hype right now and what everybody is using to complete their teams in FIFA, you can pick some cards to snipe in that first hour after a pack supply XBC comes out that you can sell later into that evening or a couple hours later after they rebound after that part of supply, right? Because what happens is De Young, 115, down to like 105, 100,000 coins on a snipe, back up to 112 to 115 later that evening. Even though the market really isn't rising right now, you just see where that demand is and you know that these cards are higher rated and they're, they're rarer. They're not getting packed that much, just enough to make them drop a bit. And you can kind of trade with those fluctuations and with those movements when you see them come out, right? Again, if you take a look at this Urente card, he act, he spiked up today, of course, because of a uh, link to the Anaki Williams. But, you know, focus on what is popular in that moment. Serie A cards did well. La Liga cards did well. Um, and then you have some of your higher rated and just elite tier cards that are going to always do well. Ferlin Mendy is probably one that did well today. 120,000 coins. Now, that is down for sure. Uh, but he was dipping into like the 116 range. He was probably 110 at some point. So not a huge rise on the Furland Mendy. But uh, the Kevin De Bruyne, again, is just a great example of a card. 91 rated, one of the best midfielders in this game. Dropping off as much as he did yesterday from 140K down to 100,000 coins. That should set off some alarm bells. That should be like, oh man, this card is stupid cheap right now. I need to get involved. And you see that again, that high rating right? That high rating means he's not getting packed that much. Even in the year of supply that we're having, a card like this is going to bounce back on some of those days. So hopefully that helps you guys kind of think about how you can learn to spot these things and spot these market movements. And again, explaining what happened yesterday and why prices drop. So with that being said, I do want to look at a couple other things, some information that we learned um, just actually a couple hours ago. Uh, about the game. Now, I know you guys have heard about this glitch, right? That's why Team of the Week was so supplied this past week and Team of the Week is, is still dead as a lot of stuff is on this market. Uh, EA tweeted that they identify, identified over 30,000 active accounts that exploited the no-loss glitch for Weekend League and have suspended them for FIFA 22 online for seven days, preventing them from participating in this week's Foot Champs Finals. GG's here for EA. Um, because they actually, they did something about it, which is a W, right? This is actually, it's not the biggest W ever, but it's a kind of a W in my opinion, because they actually did something about it. So they did ban some of these people, but 30,000 active accounts. Another thing of why I think the market might drop off a little bit is because this was just about an hour and a half ago that they tweeted this out from my time. And uh, that means that there's 30,000 less people that are not going to be able to be playing Weekend League this weekend that won't be able to access their accounts for a week. And that means even less demand. So how is the market? I know this 30,000 active accounts isn't uh, that big in the grand scheme of things on FIFA Ultimate Team, but this is 30,000 accounts that were in the Weekend League doing this glitch. And if Weekend League, the people that qualify for Weekend League is still only a small percentage of the population, that's even less demand coming this weekend um, for prices rising or maybe even after like the rivals rewards today. So I would just be careful about some of the gold cards this weekend um, and just, you know, expecting really big rises on this market because we have less people playing the weekend league uh, in total. So that's just something to kind of think about. Uh, and also just, I hope none of you guys are banned and hope none of you guys did this, but um, you know, that's, I think EA did have actually a slight, actually a slight W here from doing this. Now, also we had our first pack code tweet from Put, uh, Footwatch earlier tonight. A prime gaming exclusive pack contains seven rare players, two player pick with a minimum 81 plus overall. In years past, this would have no effect on the market. And I don't remember if prime packs are tradable or untradable. I'm pretty sure they're untradable. Uh, but they're giving out a loan Mbappe, which everybody is going to hate because that just means loan Mbappe and friendlies. Good luck with objectives. Everybody's going to have an Mbappe when we have silver objectives and you can sub in a player to score goals, a.k.a. alone Mbappe. So that part kind of sucks. But even this, seven gold rare players and a two-player pick with a minimum 81+. plus. This is an Amazon Prime gaming exclusive pack. So if you have Amazon Prime, you link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and you get this free pack. You can also subscribe to your favorite streamer on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the foot accountant. Cheeky plug. Uh, but I don't know when this is going to be coming, but most likely it'll be coming pretty soon. So that was kind of in the news yesterday. And I know this video is getting kind of longer, so I want to take it fast. But 
We had some insane road to the final market movements yesterday, and some of these cards have kind of gotten cheap post game. And I want to talk about these cards, and we'll probably do a full video talking on these road to the knockouts and our road to the final cards uh, on this game and how they move on the market. Now, let's take a look at a couple of them right here. First one is Vidal, right? Now, these cards obviously upgrade based on the number of wins that these players get with their clubs in the group stage competition and also if they can just qualify for the knockout stage. So Inter yesterday actually won against Sheriff, um, but Vidal's price went down. Why did Vidal's price go down? I'm going to talk about that. Let's look at his graph, right? So Vidal was pregame like 70,000 coins, right? He was 80K, dropped off with the supply to 69, and then dropped off down into the low 50s. So what happened was Vidal got supplied from the marquee matchups yesterday, and then Inter scored first, Sheriff scored next. So when Sheriff scored, this Vidal card had started going up, and then right after that, he was like 70K, everybody started panic selling their Vidal's because they're like, shoot, if Sheriff ends up drawing with Inter, or if Inter lose this game, then they're not going to get like any upgrades. It's going to be really, really hard for them, almost impossible to get out of the group. So this Vidal card started going down again. He went down to like, um, I think it was like 50K or something like that. He rose back up to about 60,000 coins after Inter started scoring those goals. But with again, with the amount of supply that we had yesterday, people sell these cards off post-game almost every single time. Here's an even a better example. Marquinhos, Road to the Final. Marquinhos was 770K yesterday before the packs, went down to 720. And during the game, it doesn't even do this justice here. Uh, Marquinhos went from 750K after Leipzig went up 2-1 in yesterday's game, he went down to 700k flat. And then, of course, when they came back, did I say 2-1? Two 2-1 to one? Two to Leipzig was up. PSG came back and won 3-2. This Marquinhos went from 700k back to 750. Then it went back down to 700k again because, again, of that supply and all the people that bought Marquinhos um, and, and were listing up the Marquinhos is with all those fluctuations on there. And now he's back up to 740K. Robertson's a great example. I bought two of him tonight at 187. He went from 200, 200K to 230 down to um, 185 where he was just a little bit ago. And now he's kind of rising back up again like Marquinhos did. Uh, Mukiele again, PSG scored first. So he was at 40K and then they scored two. So he went up to like 70,000 coins. Now he's back down to 40K. It's crazy how these cards move. And again, we are going to do another video on this, but it is mental at how these live cards move on this game. Rodrigo and Real Madrid won, and this card goes down post game, right? We'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but the, there were plenty of opportunities to trade with these cards live um, during their games. Now, today on Wednesday, there's only a couple Champions League games that feature uh, cards that have live items. Leroy Sane is one of them. He's actually been really, really low tonight. He was down at 302,000 coins after being 340K. So Leroy Sane is featured today, and Dan Juma from, from Villarreal. Uh, these are the only two road to the knockout cards that are actually in action today. So there's going to be uh, a lot less places to look on the market today in terms of cards that you might be able to live trade with. Um, but depending on how these games go, like let's say for uh, Villarreal is expected to be young boys, right? They, they kind of need to, to get upgrades and to keep moving on through the group stages. This Dan Juma, if young boys were to score first, would dump in price. But then if, if they, of course, came back to win Villarreal, he would probably go up. Or if Villarreal score first, he probably goes up as well. So it's just going to be crazy to watch these cards. And again, like I said, I'll make a separate video on how these cards move during the live games because it is so fun to trade with them live. It's, it's literally some of the most fun trading you can do. Very risky, but some of the most fun trading that you can do on this game. So again, some of what I'm doing on the market right now, trading with icons, trading with ones to watch cards, heroes. I mean, a lot of stuff is down, right? It's really tough. Chem style trading is, is some of your best bets at the moment. I bought these Traores with shadows for 25,000 coins, sold them for 29K. That's a couple K a card, right? It's stuff like that that you can do over and over and over to make profit right now in the way the market is inside of this game. And this freaking Luis Hernandez does not sell, bro. I'm never trading with this icon again. I know there's somebody out there that wants to link their 87 Luis Hernandez with their brand new Chucky Lozano inform is 20K. And now I'm getting undercut, bro. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, hopefully overnight this card sells because 
he, I just need him to sell. It'd be a really nice flip and you know, he should sell. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, that's the video for today, boys. Hopefully you did enjoy it and hopefully it helps make sense of what happens and why the market crashes on this game. Again, number one thing is supply, supply, supply. And I don't see a lot of this market rebounding a lot, maybe a little bit on certain time frames after awards, maybe a slight bit, some cards, but for most of the gold market, I don't see a lot of rebounds happening in the next 24 to 36 hours on this game. I think we're waiting until the weekend to see more of that. So that's the video for again today. If you did enjoy, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate for the Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace. Out.